Any other prayer requests? All right. I want to ask the church to stand then. Uh, let every heart pray, O oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus. We certainly thank you and praise you for your greatness and your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for blessing each and every one of us to be here on today. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for your power. We ask you, Lord, that you touch our hearts and our minds and our spirit. Yes. And, Lord, that we'll be able to accomplish that that you have ordained us to do. Yes. Lord, we pray, Lord, for each and every request that's been made known. We ask you, Lord, to remember men and women and children everywhere. Continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Yes. We pray, Lord, that you would bless our Bible study on today. Yes. Let something be said or done to encourage us, to inspire our hearts. Yes. And to help open us up, Lord, that yeah, we may yeah. be the servants you're calling for Hallelujah. in these last and evil days. This we pray in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you would save and add to the church daily, yeah. such as should be saved. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So we thank God uh, for allowing <coughs> us, for allowing us to come together one more time. And um, I want to uh, literally go back uh, to the book of uh, Ephesians. Um, Ephesians uh, chapter number two. Ephesians chapter number two. And if you remember, uh, we had been uh, talking about uh, God's eternal plan, his plan for us. God has an eternal plan for us. And uh, in Ephesians, it talks about that plan, uh, the whole book, really, in depth. It gives you a spiritual understanding, and it helps you with a spiritual foundation. Amen? And we all need a spiritual foundation. And that foundation is Christ. And when we understand uh, God has uh, blessed us in that first chapter, Ephesians chapter 1, it talks about the blessings of God, what God has done for us. <coughs> Literally, uh, we have to receive the blessing that, that God has blessed us, the scripture says, with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. So, in essence, I'm just trying to do a quick review before we actually get into the Bible study, that in essence, God has placed all of our blessings, all of our blessings in Christ. And when we get in Christ, we then have all access to all the blessings that God has, has afforded to us. There are no spiritual blessings outside of Christ. All spiritual blessings are in Christ. Yes. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord. And, and God has, uh, the scripture says, he has blessed us 
according uh, to how, uh, uh, how he has chosen us before the foundation of the world. And I want to I want to say this kind of simplify that word predestination and and being chosen by God because the blessings of God, as the scripture says, God so loved the world yeah. that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah. So God is not going around uh, saying, I pick you. Uh, I pick you, I reject you, I reject you, right. I pick you, I reject you. God is not doing that. Right. Amen. That's not what he means by uh, uh, chosen. If you think of, uh, think of it as uh, in this term, uh, and I'm going to use a sports analogy. I got a team, right? And, uh, and I'm looking for you to be members of my team, right? So I say to you, do you want to be a member of my team, right? Mm -hmm. And then you say, some of you say, yes, I want to be a member. I say, well, you're chosen. Uh, then wow. some of you may say, no, I don't want to be a member. Then, then you're not chosen. It's a free will kind of uh, decision, yeah. wow. right? Now, that's what the scripture means. If I were to say, who wants to be a member of my team? Probably uh, five of you will say, yes, I want to be a member. And then uh, 20 of you may say, no, I don't want to be a member. That's what the scripture means by many are called. I'm calling all of you, but a few are chosen. Amen. Those who elect or choose to be a part of the team, God says, okay, you're chosen. Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do we understand that? Yeah. Amen. And when you look at it like that, uh, a lot of the word and the scriptures that line up with it, uh, uh, follow you can you can be able to understand, Amen. So uh, so God has blessed us then uh, according as He has chosen us, Amen. So God has already have a preordained plan for all people that have been that choose to accept Christ as their Lord and Savior, Amen. And part of that plan that God has for all those that choose Christ. The first one is, is that you should be holy, yes. amen, without blame, before him in love. Yes. The second one is, is that you will be adopted into the family, amen, that you will be a part of God's royal family, amen. And, and what's unique about God's adoption is that uh, not only do you have the rights of being adopted into the family, but you uh, also have access to his divine nature. Amen. 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 God gives you a holy nature. Yes. Amen. So that you can be holy. Yes. Amen. So that you can uh, 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 experience God in, in the fullness of God. Amen. So he gives you a divine nature. When he gives you the spirit, the Holy Spirit, you, you receive the fruit of the Spirit, which is the nature of God. Amen? Y'all yeah. with me? Yeah. All right. Then, then the other part of God's plan, this is the plan of God for everybody that chooses Him, which is we, we, we have to really uh, uh, put latest to heart because it's the plan of God. Yeah. It's, it's why uh, Christ died on the cross. It's why uh, He put things in motion. The other part of God's plan is, is that you receive redemption and forgiveness of sins. Amen. Amen. God wants you to be redeemed because we all fall short uh, of the glory of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We, were, we were dead in trespasses and sins, right? And we were separated uh, from God. But Christ reconciled us back to God. Uh, that was all a part of God's plan so that you can receive redemption, so that you can be redeemed, bought back. Uh, that's why Jesus shed his blood. Yeah. Amen. So that you can be purchased. Uh, because without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and, and Jesus paid the price for our sins. And therefore then, uh, God said, well, I will forgive you. 
uh, of, of all of your sins. And that forgiven really means that he wipes it out and doesn't charge you for it. Amen? Thank you, Lord. In, in essence, God, God doesn't even hold you accountable for, for your past sins. Yes. Amen? Amen? All right. And then God, uh, part of his plan, thank you, Lord, is, is that you would be able to know and understand him. Amen? Know and understand God. Amen? That's, that's key and essential to you fulfilling your assignment with God. Amen? A lot of people don't know God. Amen? And understand God. And the only way to, to know and understand Him is through study of the Scripture and prayer. Amen? And being a doer of the Word and not just a, a hearer. Amen? God with me? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And uh, we'll get into some of these Scriptures so that, you know, it, it can help us. It can help us. And then, and then, uh, lastly, uh, uh, the, the plan of God, his initial plan for everybody, is for, uh, once again, I said for you to know and understand him, and then the last part of that plan is for that you would spend eternity in heaven and upon this earth with him. Yes. Amen? That's, that's, that's the plan of God. That you would spend eternity in heaven and upon this earth. You're not just going to spend all your time in heaven. Uh, that's why he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth so that you can spend eternity with him in heaven and in earth. Amen? Hallelujah. And now, uh, uh, so the plan of God, if you allow me to say it this way, is two phases. Amen? The first phase you are already in. Uh, that, that, that you, uh, God, I'm going to get into it, that God has given you a work, an assignment. You've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, so you're, so, you're, so you're connected to the plan, to the will of God, and, and, and God is working with you, both the will and the do of His good pleasure. And the second part of that plan is for you to to, to live out your life here upon this earth so that, so that uh, as Paul said, I fought a good fight. Yeah. I kept the faith. Yeah. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord uh, shall give me at that day. Yeah. Amen. So, so you're living this life, if you allow me to say it, to live again. Yeah. Amen. Amen. To live out eternity with God. Yeah. Amen. I'll leave with first things first. Tell your neighbor first things first. First things first. <laughs> uh, God is good. So, so, so God has predetermined all of our blessings in Christ Jesus so that we can live uh, 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 out his eternal plan. And I just told you in a nutshell what God's eternal plan is. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And now, uh, all spiritual believers uh, are in righteous standing with God. Amen. When you believe on Christ, amen, and accept him as your Lord and Savior, uh, 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 you become a new creature uh, created in Christ Jesus. Uh, notice with scriptures, prepared unto good works. Amen. God expects you to live holy. He expects you to live righteously through his power. Amen. Through the power and the anointing of God. Amen. Now, now you need power. Amen. To overcome and to deal with daily situations. Remember I said you're in the first phase. Uh, you're being tested. You're being tried. Uh, and you're going through trials and tribulations. Things may be coming at you from all points of view, but, but God has already equated that and, and, and calculated that uh, and so that none of those things or what you experience in life should be able to overcome you. Uh, there's no temptation that has taken us 
but such is common to man. But God is faithful. Uh, who won't allow us to be tempted above that which we are able. And with everything that you're going through, he's already made a way of escape. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have to trust the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Uh, with all of our heart. And lean not to our own understanding. But acknowledge him in all of our ways. And he promised to direct your path. Amen. And the scripture says once you get born again of the water and the spirit, you shall receive power. Uh, after that, the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, God, God put all this power in Jesus Christ when he raised him from the dead. Uh, he put all that power, everything you need. That's why, hallelujah, there, there's nothing you need that's outside of Jesus. He put all the power you need in Jesus when he raised him from the dead. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now think about that for a moment. When he raised him from the dead, uh, even Jesus was changed. Uh, he came here as man. Hallelujah. And, and when he was raised from the dead, he had a glorified body. Yeah. Uh, that's proven that, that being raised again, you can change. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. Uh, when you get buried with Christ, through baptism, you come up out of that water, you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can change. Uh, amen? Do you believe that? You can change. Uh, your lifestyle can change. Your perspective can change. Uh, that's why he said, let this mind be in you, uh, which is also in Christ Jesus. There's a change. Uh, that, and, and part of that change is when you get born again, you got a hunger and a thirst uh, after righteousness. Yeah. Amen. If you're not hungry, if you said you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, uh, and you receive the Holy Ghost, and there's no change, uh, then there's a problem. Yeah. Uh, that's not normal. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, let me, that's not normal. Because, because when you receive him, you now have an appetite. Uh, for the spiritual things of God. Yes, Amen. And that comes from the new birth. That comes from redemption. Being born again. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, what, what's so key also about the redemption and being in Christ, now you have a new perspective. You have a new, uh, help me here, Holy Ghost, you've got a new desire by which to live and for to live. Uh, before, you was only desirous to serve your own lustful, evil desires. Uh, whatever came to your mind. Uh, but with Christ, now you got a desire uh, to serve God, to be a part of the kingdom of God, uh, to love God's people, and to love those that need help. Amen? Hallelujah. God puts that in you. Amen. You got a new desire now. And now you got a new aim, a new focus, uh, a new purpose. Uh, before, you probably hated your life. Uh, but now, in Christ, you love your life. You love your new life with Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And, and with that new resurrection, now you have new access to power. Amen? To authority. Yes. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My, my, my. You don't go, you don't do the things you used to do. No. Amen? Because you got power. Amen. Uh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't do the things that, that you used to do. You don't, you don't act the way you used to act. Uh, uh, now, now you want to know uh, a new and better way. Amen? Uh, and now, with that, my last point about that, now you have a desire to know God. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. You, you're, you're mindful uh, of the things that be of God. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And, 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 and uh, as, as Paul said, uh, uh, you see in yourself uh, uh, when you would do uh, good 
uh, evil is always present. Amen. And you have a desire. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, help me. Because uh, I see some things that are in me that I, I, I don't like. Uh, and, I, and, I, and my desire is to be more like you. Yeah. Amen. Uh, now that's a good thing. Uh, you got a spirit of repentance. You got a spirit of seeking after God. You got a spirit of love. Uh, hallelujah. You're changed. You're different. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, you come up. Hallelujah. And, 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 and uh, that, that comes from the resurrection. All right? And, and now that I'm, I'm about finished with my introduction here, it's a long introduction. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, you being in Christ. Amen? Tell somebody I'm in Christ. Uh, and when you study that uh, in the book of Ephesians, you're seated with him. Uh, uh, far above principalities and powers and rulers and dominions <laughs> and authority. Amen? And you're seated at the right hand of God. Amen? A seat of position. Yeah. <laughs> A seat of authority. Amen. Now, now we have to accept that uh, that 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 I, I'm in a position. You're in a position of authority. Amen. Amen. And God wants you to be uh, uh, to realize that because He wants you to carry out His mission and His plan. Uh, when when an officer gets commissioned, they get commissioned with authority. Amen. To to arrest people, don't they? Uh, to charge people, no. uh, to, and they, they're commissioned to serve people. Am I right? Uh, and 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 their authority originates from a higher authority. Uh, hallelujah! Your authority originates from the highest authority that will ever be. Uh, there's no other higher authority than God. Uh, hallelujah! That's 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 another reason why. We should uh, uh, really value our position. Yeah. Uh, because when you're in Christ, you've got the highest position that can ever be. Uh, uh, there's no higher position uh, than you being a, a, a son or a daughter of God. Uh, I don't care if you call me the grand poobah bishop. Uh, it doesn't stand to the fact that I'm a child of God. You can call yourself the president of the United States, but it doesn't match that you are a child of God. Jesus 
was given as the head of the church. Y'all believe that? Yeah. Scripture, right? Thank you, Lord. And, and he being the head of the church, we are the body of Christ. Amen? I got a head and I got a body. Am I right? You got a head and you got a body. Am I right? The head is no good without the body. The body is no good without the head. The two work in tandem with one another. Amen? Y'all you agree with that? The two work in agreement with one another. Uh, you have to work in agreement with Christ. Am I right? The purpose of the head is to give vision, to give plan, to give insight, to give instruction. The purpose of the body is to carry out what the head is instructed, what the vision, what the plan, amen, is. Am I right? My hands don't tell my head, uh uh, that ain't the right plan. Uh, my hands do whatever the head is saying to carry out the will that is being instructed to the body. Uh, so therefore, that analogy applies to us. Uh, God, Christ has the plan. He has the vision. Uh, he works in us both the will and the do, the desires. Amen. Everything, the knowledge, the understanding. Uh, it's up to us as a body to carry it out. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to carry it out. Amen. You got to listen to your head. Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. My God. My God. So, 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 so you as the body, you have a 